be, uh, be live, I can, I, you know, if I had to cough or something, I couldn't. <laughs> Actually, uh, we're, uh, we are live, apparently. Oh, okay. David, David Osmond's just jumped in to say we're live. Okay. David, okay. Well, thank that's you. Uh, good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> The right. things we say before this show starts. <laughs> it could have been worse, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a little uh, a little kind of time and management issue. I was an hour behind myself. So, um, yes, apologies to those of you who have been waiting since noon. We are now ready to rock. So, hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. So, yeah, this is, for those of you who may have wandered in without knowing what you've um happened upon this is the alliance of independent authors member q a a monthly q a run by myself um orna ross director of ally and and michael Laurent. hi michael hi orna good to it's good to a... see you and i i owe you an apology uh sorry i couldn't make it last month I, I i saw you holding down the fort by yourself last month so that was really cool it was not easy to manage without you my friend but <laughs> we got there we got there in the end <laughs> yep yep we made it so well, good morning so, to everybody who's joining us. Uh, Dale, Roberts, Robin Phillips, and Jane Steen, welcome. Hi, everyone. Yes, and um, it's it's been quite a while since we um, saw, saw each other last and a lot going on in your country. And of course, coronavirus con continuing to, to change people's lives and authors' lives as we now kind of begin to return to new things. And the whole Black Lives Matter movement, yeah, which I'm sure has been front of your mind. Yep, it has. And, um, you know, I, I can tell you that over the past few weeks, um, I have gone through a range of emotions. There's been um, some nights where I haven't been able to sleep. Um, you know, the George Floyd murder really, really bothered me and disturbed me. Um, and it's been really encouraging to see uh, solidarity from people all over the world. Um, I think it's been, it was extremely humbling. Um, I watched the funeral yesterday and, and that was really, really tough. Um, but again, really encouraging. And um, I'm just, I'm just really proud of the way the world has rallied around the black community. And um, it's very humbling. And so I actually have a video that's going to be dropping on my channel tomorrow on Author Level Up. Um, if you're interested in hearing more about my thoughts on it, feel free to watch that. I definitely be watching that and, and was watching the funeral and very concerned about how we can ally um, in a broader mm -hmm. sense to our usual sense of, of ally and very interested also in publishing and and mm -hmm. who gets to speak and all of those things that are very core to our mission. And um, so we, we will be doing a special on that probably next week as soon as we can kind of get it together on our news channel but yeah we would reach out especially to to our um members anybody who's particularly interested in this issue if you are interested in working um on, on either being an ally or on leading uh, we need to be led i think by our black brothers and sisters on this one um please do get in touch because it is something that's important to us okay so on to our questions yes so our first question is from our member lori uh, Lori wrote us um, with, with an issue that she was having um, just to kind of summarize it and, and set it up for for us to answer Orna. Um, Lori had had some family issues. Um, she had a relative that she was taking care of, and she was working with a self-publishing firm to get her book out into the world. And uh, while she was handling those issues, she was pleased to find out that readers really liked her book and they were giving five star reviews. Um, but the problem that she has is that the self-publishing company that she's working with needs to know what they want, what she wants them to do with about 200 books that they have in their warehouse. Does she get the book shipped to her so that she can do some marketing or does she allow them to be destroyed and maybe there's only a couple of copies left? Um, she kind of wants an answer because uh, the firm is is pressing her to to make a decision here pretty quickly. So, sure. So what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, she wasn't in a position. I'm taking it to uh, to actually do the marketing that would move the book, mm -hmm. um, because of the family issues at the start. So, first thing I would say is always, always. Um, keep your copies and use them. So definitely don't have the books destroyed. Do take them back from your publisher. And I think the most important thing to say, Laurie, is that, you know, 
the wonderful thing and one of the best things about being a self-publisher is that the opportunity to market is always there. So in traditional publishing, it's a window that you, a window of opportunity that you get in traditional publishing is all set up around the, what they call the front list, which is the books that they are actively promoting in that season. Everything else is on the back list and backlist books don't get a lot of juice. With uh, self-publishing authors, anything can be brought out to be front list at any time. So um, you can decide now if your family situation has resolved itself, and I'm, I'm guessing that it has, and that's why you're in touch. You can now begin to put together a campaign as if that book was launching in six weeks time. You lose out maybe a little bit of kind of um, juice that you get on the algorithm sometimes for being a new book. But honestly, it's such a small thing in comparison to dedicated energy behind your books that I wouldn't even worry about that. The thing is, get your books back and get a plan together. That's the most important thing. Get a plan together for how you are, A, going to get this book moving, and while you are getting that book moving, how you're going to produce the next book that will come in behind it, because one book isn't enough ever. You need to, to keep it. And I, I think I read somewhere in the question that you have plans for a trilogy. Um, so it, you know, while promoting one, start writing the other. And that's the balance we're always constantly juggling the writing and the promotion we're always writing one thing and promoting another and that requires us to wear two different hats but yeah um great that you're you're back in business all right and our next question is from member michael that's a great name by the way and uh michael is asking uh, the gist of his question is when an author goes wide where should they distribute their work and what book formats does each retailer allow Okay, so that's a big question in terms of a decision. Um, so there is there's no absolute rule on this, and there is different. You know, different people are comfortable with different outlets, and there is no um, you know, there's no one thing that I can say every single author should do. There are general principles that we kind of recommend, and it depends, a lot of this depends on whether you are time rich or money rich. Um, hopefully you're one or the other. Uh, going wide will require you to, if, if you can, if that you would publish to what we call the big five directly. So that will be Amazon KDP, Apple Books, uh, Google Play, Michael, I'm going to forget some of them, Kobo, uh, Writing mm -hmm. Life, and Barnes Ingram's, and Noble. Oh, yeah, and Barnes and Noble. That's your your big five ebook dis mm -hmm. distributors. A lot of people say, why Barnes and Noble? They're failing and all the rest of it. Uh, that company still has a lot of, um, you know, a huge mailing list alone, but it yeah. still has still has a lot of value in the company. So don't be distracted by that. That's that's your big five for ebooks. And then there's Ingram Spark for your print and KDP, Amazon KDP print, those two together. And then audiobooks. Um, Michael will speak in, in terms of distribution of audiobooks in a moment, perhaps, but let's just stick with ebooks and print books for now. Having said all of that, this is the way that you will, and then you use, sorry, you use an aggregator, either, you know, somebody like draft to digital Publish Drive, Street Lib, there are slash words, there are a number of different aggregators that you can use to reach smaller stores outside of those, those big distributors. The thing about the big ones is they really do reach a lot of the world, but they don't reach the whole world, and particularly the emerging world in, um, you know, parts of uh, where e-reading has taken off in a big, big way and uh, that are hungry for content in a way that perhaps the overly served markets of, uh, of the US and the UK are not. So it's a good idea to be with an aggregator. If you're short on time, you might want to let that aggregator take every D uh, distribution outlet and they prefer to do that they like to have some of the bigger movers like google play and apple and they would ideally like you to have your amazon account run through there as well we recommend that everybody keeps goes directly to amazon preferably to big five and uses an aggregator for the rest but if you're strapped for time perhaps amazon plus the aggregator and um, the, the difficulty with the aggregator is that there are certain promotions and things that you're not available for if you um, don't go direct to the services like, for example, Kobo, Apple, and so on. Yep, exactly. And um, just a quick word on audiobooks. Um, 
Audible is the biggest player in the house. So if you wanted to get your books into audiobook, you would go through ACX. I would recommend that. And then what I would do is use other audiobook aggregators to get to other markets that you can't can't get to. So ACX will take you to Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. And then you can use like Findaway Voices is one that I use. I like them quite a bit. They'll take you to all these little other little places um, that you can't get into otherwise. I think Authors Republic is another one um, that people use quite a bit. So those are just some options for audio. Both of those are partner members and we can we can mm -hmm. highly recommend them. And the thing I think with all of these audio print and ebooks is to get out of an exclusivity mindset. So, the you know, you're asking about going wide. So clearly you're you're thinking about getting beyond having an exclusive arrangement with any one person. So, you know, ACX offers an exclusive arrangement. KDP offers an exclusive arrangement. You may decide to use that strategically on one book, but not to put all your, you know, all your products and all your things in those in those baskets is what's recommended. Jane uh, is saying here she uses um, Jane Steen uses uh, draft to digital, a great aggregator for Apple and Barnes and Noble because she just finds those two to be a complete hassle and totally understand that. Though I will say Apple is improving and reconnecting with the Apple Books platform and looking for good content. Um, so uh, just to, to put that out there as well. Yeah, it's a lot easier to publish on Apple than it used to be. Yeah. Um, in fact, they I think they just sent out an announcement maybe maybe last month that now they're they're trying to make it easier. You don't have to have a Mac computer <laughs> to publish on iBooks. So who knows? You know, they're they're coming along. Yeah. It's and taken a long time, but they're coming along. <laughs> they are. And um, we have just going up, actually, we'll be in the member zone should be next week. We have a guide that they've we've worked with them on, especially for our members about how to use Apple and, um, you know, going direct and some of the promotional thing tools and stuff that you can use on the platform that are helpful. So, um, yeah, keep an eye out for that. I'll remind people of it next month when we're, when we're back. OK. On. And uh, Mary asked Orna a question for you. Can we see this chat later? Um, is this something that you can yeah. see the chat when you rewatch? Always. Oh, everything we do is always available on replay and it will also be played um, in audio form. So the Friday after we go out live in this chat, we produce the podcast and that goes up on our blog, selfpublishingadvice.org. And uh, you can catch the podcast there, which will have a full transcript and the show notes and everything. So always, always available for replays. Once it's out, it's out forever. <laughs> you can always watch it. So, all right. Our next question is from Esther. She says, I'm an elderly woman, 74 years old, slowly making my way to self-publishing. Nothing on the market at present, but I really don't want to reinvent myself as a publisher on my own. Is there some model of indie authors collaborating and forming uh, a co-op so that they can help each other with their marketing? And how would I be able to find and participate in such a service? Congratulations, Esther. That's that's awesome. 74, jumping into self-publishing. Kudos. <laughs> Definitely. Fantastic, Esther. The short answer is yes. There are lots of very successful author collaborations and people doing precisely what you're talking about. So, you know, perhaps people who have um, editorial experience getting together who, who are designers also who can do you know and sharing the skills Triskeel is is one company that jumps to mind that has been doing that successfully for a very long time the it's important that you get I think if you're if you are collaborating with authors in this way that you collaborate with people who are in your own niche and your own genre rather than cross genre I think that's very helpful and the, in terms of how you actually make it happen one of one way would be to put a call out on the forum if you're an ally member which you are of course because we're answering your question and um, if we could put a call out on the forum to see if there was somebody interested in forming a collaboration with you in uh, in your particular uh, zone if you're on facebook if not drop us an email about that and we'll see if we can make something happen for you but there is no short answer to that question that I can think of. You'd have to go to where the authors are, reach out to people who are doing the kind of work you admire and that you, people you'd like to collaborate with and and see. And then you need to make an agreement, a written agreement, which puts down in writing everything that you expect from the collaboration and um, 
you know, the, the terms and conditions on which you are collaborating. That's very important. So author collaboration is a big deal in the indie world at the moment. I think authors are really catching on to the power that we have, you know, to help each other um, to together. So you're definitely on trend, Esther. So yeah, be in yeah. touch about it. Yeah, and, and um, just for everyone's benefit, that company that you mentioned um, at the Tr beginning uh, of the Tr answer? Triskeel. Triskeel, how do you spell yeah. that? T-R-I-S-K-E-L-E. Um, there's a, a, a little about them on the blog, actually, um, about about their, we did a post on author collaboration very recently. So I'll get the link to that and put it in the show notes for the podcast, which mentions Triskeel and a number of other um, successful author collaborations as well. So yeah, you might Google that, Esther, or take a search on the blog. If you just put author collaboration into the search box on selfpublishingadvice.org you'll find the ultimate guide to author collaboration of a sort of a 3000 word post with um, different examples as well okay all right our next question is from colin uh, colin has written a very specialized book um, for the christian market and his question is does ally know of any christian marketing agencies to help market christian books or are there any additional resources that maybe he can invest in to help him market his book? We don't do genre specific, um, you know, recommendations because we're not we're not on top of all the different genres that are, that there are available. So we don't. I can't off the top of my head say to you, um, you know, a Christian um, service, a service that works in this field, in this genre, but you definitely should search on the member database and just see if there is somebody in the, um, marketing end who is specializing in these, in, in that genre, and um, also have a look in the directory. But I think the best way to find anything like that is always to look at other authors books and uh, look at the acknowledgements and see what other what other people are doing essentially turn up to where all other authors are and to where the readers are um in whatever genre you're in find out where people are and become part of that community become part of that conversation yep perfectly said so our our next question is kind of the the subject of the episode today and that is from Stephen, and he asks what are allies best practices for producing a book in print Ooh, and again a big a big question, big question. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i know i think you've done some some prep on this but uh, i i presume i'm going to treat the question that it in in terms of that it is talking about the production end of things production and we've already touched on distribution so in terms of distribution best practice is to distribute on amazon for the amazon ecosystem and ingram spark for the rest of the world that maximizes your um your options as a, as a POD publisher. And I know we have, a, we have another question on that in a little while, but um, in terms of best practices and in, in terms of putting the book together, first of all, you need to become aware of things like fonts and um, page layout design, cover design, which is different and so on. So. Um, did you did you ha have any more sort of sense, Michael, of what is meant by best practices specifically? Um, no, not necessarily. Um, just best practices to help them create a quality uh, quality product. So that I think with print, there are two options, really. First of all, you have to decide, are you going to put the time and effort it takes into doing page layouts and stuff? <laughs> Before there was a fantastic software that I now use called Vellum, and I highly recommend Vellum, um, Vellum software for compiling print as well as ebooks, having gone there and, and, and used it for that. Before Vellum, I paid somebody to do um, my page layouts and stuff for print because it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of time effort it's meticulous close work as well and there are lots of things that you need to know and learn if you haven't done it before so it isn't even possible 
to just say what are best practices for print books because so much depends on what is what genre is the book in what size trim size and stuff are you using you know what kind of cover and, and format do you want is it going to be hard back soft back um you know there are so many things to be taken into consideration i can highly recommend thebookdesigner.com joel freelander our advisor uh, with regard to print books and if you had specific questions yourself about your own formatting joel would be delighted to to um answer those but i think there's a lot of a lot of thinking a lot of research a lot of work to do um mm. in order to to learn how to format unless you use a software like van which makes it very easy i would say get somebody else to do it which yeah. um, doesn't yeah isn't possibly the answer that you're looking for so again it really does depend on how much you fancy doing that work i think yeah i mean you have two options i mean you can do it yourself or have someone else do it if you've got a mac the 300 dollars you spend on vellum will be well spent um there's also a, a program called Affinity Publisher. I think it's it's fifty dollars. It's like a slimmed down version of Adobe InDesign, and you can use that to to publish or to create quality paperbacks as well. Um, there's also th this is a little bit of an inferior option, but it can work for you. You can use um, covered or um, paperback formatting templates. Um, there are places that that sell those where they basically give you a template and then all you have to do is copy and paste your book into it. It's not as simple as that. There is some formatting quirks that you have to do with Microsoft Word. I highly recommend people avoid Microsoft Word for print formatting. But if that's all you got, that's all you got. And you can hire a typesetter. You can. Um, the only problem with typesetters is if you're if you have to make a change or a typo change in your book later, they're probably going to charge you for it. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. So I understand why they have to do it, but you know, that there's good, that's going to put a barrier between, between you and getting changes to your book if you ever need to do that. So that's one of the major downsides to a typesetter, unless, you know, you're using a typesetter for something very specific. Like if you have a, a certain type of hardcover or a certain type of, uh, special feature that you want to have in your book, then maybe that makes sense. But those would be my two options. I would recommend Vellum first, but if you can't do that, $50 isn't bad to spend on something like Affinity Publisher. Yeah, Affinity, that's a, that's a, that's a, good, a good tip. And again, be in touch, you know, um, on the forum, there are people who have been through these very challenges that you are facing. So it, with print formatting in particular, it's a it's a place where we very often have members coming on asking really specific questions. And you might think nobody knows the answer to this. And, and suddenly you see 25 authors were there before and they have worked out answers, you know, um, for you. So do definitely bring, if you are going to tackle this big job yourself, do uh, bring your questions to the forum. Absolutely. Okay, so our next question is from, Karen, uh, Karen has a 96 page comic book and she's realizing that if she, as she does the math and looks at Ingram spark, it's, she's going to need to price her book at $19 and 90 cents to make a $2 and 84 cent commission. And that's a lot for a 96 page comic book. And she's trying to find a print on demand service that meets her needs. So the gist of her question is, what are my options if I'm not satisfied with the current print on demand options for my book? Yeah, I mean, this is an issue. There's no doubt about it. So I think it's important for us to realize that the tools that we've got, these new tools, they didn't exist before. So print on demand, um, as we can now do it through um, KDP Print and Ingram Spark, 10 years ago, well, a little over 10 years ago now, nothing well yeah 10 years ago it just wasn't available there was no way of doing print on demand at all and it's absolutely fantastic that we have it but it doesn't work for every single book and mm -hmm. you know highly illustrated books print on demand is great for the straight fiction um you know 70 hour straightforward non-fiction non-illustrated 70,000 plus kind of book uh, there your price points makes some sense they're still more expensive than a consignment um run will ever be and the kind of economies of scale 
that a big publisher can put behind a book. You're never as an indie going through able to meet those. Print on demand is our best option. It doesn't mean it's perfect. So for a book like this, a 96 page comic book, they, you know, it's very niche and it's very particular and there aren't actually any perfect options for your kind of book, unfortunately. If you go the, uh, there is no better POD option than um, Ingram and Amazon. Reason being, they've got this distribution network attached to them. If you go to another POD publisher, you might get a slightly lower cost per copy of book. It's not going to bring it down into the kind of prices that a commercial publisher can charge for a book like this. It's not going to bring it down to where, you know, the kind of price you can get if you do a consignment run. But then you've got the distribution headache. Some of the POD and um, some, some of the POD services outside of Ingram and Amazon do have connections to distributors and, you know, do have a network behind them. But on a POD model, this book is going to be an expensive book and really that nobody can do much about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's especially with comics, there's just no, that I know of, self-publishing platform that would be able to help. So it, it, it's kind of one of those unfortunate, sorry, we're kind of in a gray area for you. <laughs> yeah, there's but not hopefully. a lot. Could, you could try Blurb blurb.com mm -hmm. which is uh, good on illustrated books but again it's not going to reduce reduce the price usually so it's really about the kind of book that you have decided to to write the other thing is if i were in your position i think what i would do is make it premium i would mm -hmm. go i put a hard back on it i'd you know talk about sign copies i'd you know i'd look at some way of actually making the price commensurate with the experience so maybe some kind of add-on to the book where you can actually charge 25 dollars and and get some sort of decent return yourself and uh, while it's still offering value to the reader trying to do it on the straight commercial model is not going to work for you all right um, our next Okay. Sorry, I'll just hop in there because Jane has a, a kind of connected question before we go to the other oh, question. That, that's, which is, that's perfect. Which is also on um, on POD distribution. Um, for years, I've been offering the usual trade discount, which is 55% um, on Ingram Spark. So the titles can be ordered by bookstores. But let's say I don't exactly get the impression that bookstores are rushing to order. Smiley face. Um, <laughs> I'm starting to think of changing my tactics. Any thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yes, I I would say, again, you're in the situation with most bookstores that the average book is not priced in such a way and it's not getting um, getting big orders unless you have an actual campaign to shift your book through the bookstores then there's not a lot of point in having the 55%. You'd be better off with a, with, a, with a different discount. They don't sell by themselves. There needs to be something behind them. The bookstore needs to know. So they're in the Ingram catalog and can be ordered at any time. But that doesn't mean that they are being ordered. So a reader would have to specifically go in and ask for the book. So you need a campaign that is built around bookstores. And then why would you do that? Because you can actually and um, you know get them to buy directly on amazon online at home they're far more likely to it's more likely to work for you that way and for the kind of readers so yeah i would rethink it on this as a campaign all right our next question is from member janet um the gist of janet's question is uh, she's got a a book that um, she's trying to to get off the ground trying to do some marketing and her her, her question is is it worth it to pursue paid reviews? Okay, the first thing I would say is download. We have um, a 10,000 word book about how to get your first 50 reviews. Uh, and there is a section in there about paid reviews, which you can take a look at. There's no easy answer to this question. Um, you know, there's there's kind of sniffiness about paid reviews uh, in the self-publishing community and in the publishing community. But, you know, reviewers need to be paid. And so paid reviews and authors need reviews. And so paid reviews exist. So there are very different opinions along the way. I'm not going to get into any of that. Just address how useful is a paid review. So 
you know, uh, the most commonly pursued paid reviews are from people like Kirkus or Publishers Weekly, which is a review you can then use in the editorial section of your Amazon page and, you know, put out there as a review, just like you would if you got a review in a newspaper. So they're seen as different from customer reviews and they can carry some weight with librarians perhaps or other people who might be you know purchasing decision people who might be looking at your book if your model is selling your books online to readers i'm not sure that those editorial reviews matter all that much to them i think they're much more inclined to look at customer help other reader reviews and see because those reviews up at the top the editorial reviews it's kind of we've seen so many books that have so many great editorial mm -hmm. reviews. There seems to be more um, more sort of, it's easier to read through reader reviews than it is to read through paid mm -hmm. reviews. So the answer to your question is, it depends on what you're using that paid review for. Um, if it's just purely to get a review, it's, it's not a good way. There are better, easier ways to get reviews and they're all covered in that downloadable but you you can get it in the member zone um you know there there are lots of other ways getting reviews though is not easy getting your first 10 reviews is the hardest when you've 10 reviews on a book so it gets yeah. easier after that but it takes time it takes trouble it's you know you've got to reach out to people you've got to put put the book out there you've got to hustle a bit to get to get reviews and it needs to be built into your marketing how are you actually going to get the book reviewed yeah ex absolutely and this is maybe a i'm not, i haven't done this but those paid reviews typically the people that pay for them are authors that have no platforms or they're just starting off in their career because they think that the review will help supercharge their book where i haven't seen any evidence that that's true um, if my book was selling a lot then and i was making a lot of money then maybe it would make sense because then you could use that as a marketing expense if your book is selling a lot then you could add you know some of these paid review services that have a little bit of luster on them maybe that would look better but that's the only circumstance for me personally i would consider paying for a review from a place like that because if you think about the cost oh it's so know, expensive it's a good two hundred dollars generally speaking for any of them that are worthwhile that have any i love that word kind of kind of luster um, <laughs> and if you look at that amount of money and you think about what that amount of money can do for you in terms of marketing your book in, in other ways there is no contest you know as, yeah. as mike said most of the authors who are doing best are not authors who are using those services. So yeah, download download the booklet and then come back if you have follow on questions from that. All right. Well, uh, one more question, just so we can kind of get through, because we have a lot of questions to get through in our queue. Um, Peter asks, okay, I'll just summarize the question. Should I join an organization like Romance Writers, um, the Romance Writers Association right now? Uh, short answer without knowing your circumstances is probably. Um, I'm a big believer in associations, but I would be, wouldn't I? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but I, I think an association can, you know, by talking to other authors who are in a similar situation to you, be that, you know, as ally members are on the indie front mm -hmm. or in your genre, like something like the Romance uh, Writers Association, you're going to pick up a lot of stuff. And, you can't say for sure whether it's worthwhile or not, but it's always worth a year. And I think what happens with most associations and definitely happens with us in Ally is authors join, but they don't use the resources. So my second answer is if you're not going to really get stuck in there and avail of everything that, that being a member affords you, then the answer is no. Um, you know, join an association if you want to, to really draw on what that association can do for you. And I think it's well worth being a member of both Ally and your genre association. I think those two marry very nicely together. And perhaps also your local um, writers organization like here in London, the Society of Authors or in the US, the mm -hmm. Authors Guild or the Australian uh, Writers Association, whichever, you know, wherever you are. I think, you know, they have 
distinct and different things to offer. You might not want to be in all three, but it's certainly worth giving, giving it a, a look and seeing which is the best value. The problem, the downside for self-publishing authors are not in the Romance Writers Association because they are actually leaders and, and pioneers very often in self-publishing, but a lot of the um, tr traditional trade author associations, the national associations and some of the genre associations is they don't have a clue about self-publishing. Mm -hmm. So actually, Michael and I are on a mission now. We're going to change that because yeah. uh, we're we're going to be working with the organisations to actually, uh, you know, work together so that their understanding of self-publishing, uh, we can bring everything that we know from our experience in Ally and then bring the genre people, you know, more closely into Ally. So um, I think that that is going to change over time. But right at this moment, unfortunately, some of the traditional organizations don't understand self-publishing and you'll be an expert. You'll know more than a lot of the authors in there will know, but still there's learning to be had, I think. Absolutely. Yep. Um, you know, I, it's worth pointing out that um, Romance Writers Association is doing a little bit of soul searching right now. So, you know, it, if you do join them, just kind of understand that just given the light of all the recent events that have gone on, it's worth pointing that out if you haven't seen that in the news. But yeah, I, I think joining associations makes a lot of sense. And it's, it's, it just helps you connect with people, which is so important early on in your career. Absolutely. All and right. Yeah, I, thank you for that. Um, good point. Yeah, absolutely. So that is our last question, but I did have a public service announcement. So uh, the book that Orna and I are working on, your self-publishing questions answered. I know that you guys have been asking questions about it. So the title is Your Self-Publishing Questions Answered, and it's 150 plus writing, publishing, and marketing tips that every indie author and poet needs to know. And so we are very close to, to, to the point where we're going to be launching it next month. And we are ready at this point in the next couple of weeks to start distributing advanced review copies. So if you would like an advanced review copy, uh, we're going to put a link in the show notes, but you can visit that at, uh, if you just fill out a quick form at authorlevelup.com slash QA advance. All right. So that's authorlevelup.com slash QA advance. So there's two A's in the middle of the thing here. Um, I probably could have done a better short link, but that's what I came up with at six o'clock in the morning. So, <laughs> so offlevelup.com slash QA advance. And the really cool thing about this is that we'll give you an advanced review copy. We would, we would love it if you left an honest review um, just to help us out. If you found value from the show, it, it's, it's helping your favorite nonprofit organization for authors, self-published authors, right? But also um, we will also make the audio book available for advance listen as well. And the audiobook is narrated by me. So and, and rather brilliantly, I might add. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I'm wrapping up the, the the finished copy of the audiobook as we speak. So that will we're going to launch the book with ebook, paperback, and audio. So that's going to be a really cool thing. And uh, we would love your all support if you would like to to check it out. It it recaps all the questions that we talk about every month on this channel. But it it it's it's organized by the seven stages of publishing. And so we would love to be able to share it with you. And um, any support you can lend us with this launch would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, so authorlevelup.com slash QA advance. Brilliant. And uh, we will have that in the show notes. And if I might say that Michael has done a really fantastic job in terms of both highlighting and picking out the most salient and important questions and, and giving really deep dive, really great answers. So yeah, any any support we can have. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're not going to say no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Alrighty, so that's it for another month. Um, please do send your questions in for next month's show. If you would like to publicly air them and have us consider them here, you can have um, any question answered anytime under the Ask Ally campaign by going to the forum, the Facebook forum, where you'll also get advice from other advisors and members. Or if you'd rather keep it private, just drop us an email at info at allianceindependentauthors.org. So that's it for another month. We will see you again next month. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody.